my name is Isabel Schechter. I have been a science fiction fantasy fan since childhood. I've been an active convention attendee and con runner for almost 20 years. And it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to Glass Ceilings, Missing Stairs, and Gatekeepers. Geeks still deal with sexism. Sponsored in part by the Chicago Nerd Social Club. Uh, I was planning to live tweet the panel, however, there is no Wi-Fi. Uh, there is the claim of Wi-Fi, but if any of you have found the elusive missing grail, let me know. Um, this panel features speakers from last year's Exercising the Specter of the Fake Geek Girl panel, as well as some other amazing women. This discussion was created with the understanding that we are not, not, <laughs> not, <laughs> arguing about whether or not sexism is a problem in fandom and geek communities. We are dissecting the myriad ways that sexism manifests itself in geek culture and how we can address it. Please note, this will be reflected in the Q&A section, so please do not opine that sexism is not a problem. <laughs> Doors panel said, just because it doesn't happen to you or you don't see it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. And just in case you did miss it, in the past month alone we have witnessed a Hugo voting mess. <laughs> mess is the word I'm going to use. <laughs> WonderCon's I Hate Geek Girls t-shirt and the actor that plays Spider-Man getting the full side eye from Emma Stone over his <laughs> Sewing is a feminine activity. And speaking of movies and their stars, while Captain America the Winter Soldier had plenty of shots of Black Widow's ass sets, <laughs> there still appears to be no Black Widow movie in sight. Nor is a Wonder Woman any closer to being made due to its difficult backstory. Because viewers simply can't get into that. Unlike, of course, the extremely simple concept of a talking tree and a gun-toting raccoon. <laughs> That's the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy movie. So sexism is a problem in geek culture. And I'm going to introduce our panelists so that they can talk about the issues that women have to deal with and ways to combat them. So Sushila is going to be our moderator. STEM communicator, helping make science more accessible to the world by helping researchers talk about their work using clear, simple language. Uh, Carly Frank. Carly is an activist, a college instructor, and a local artist who specializes in comic art. Laura Koroski. and blogger for Challenge by Geek, where she writes about nerd culture and geeky topics through a feminist perspective. Kate Lansky. <laughs> Kate is an avid gamer, lifelong comics fan, unrepentant book hoarder, and writer. Kate recently had her short story, We Save What We Can, published in the Toasted Cheese Literary Journal. Dawn Sienna Moon. Lifelong geek, web designer, singer songwriter, and the producer and director of Rock's Geek, the Belly Dance and Fire Show. And she's also part of the podcast, Podcast on the Edge of Forever. Erin Tipton. Erin is a lighting designer extraordinaire whose love affair with Anne McCaffrey's Dragons began at age eight. She's been a fan of the Doctor since she was tall enough to be able to see the TV from where she was hiding behind the couch. <laughs> and Mitchie Trotta. <laughs> Mitchie is a blogger for Geek Melange, covering fandom, geek culture, and social issues. She's also a board member for the Chicago Nerd Social Club and Spins Fire, sometimes in cosplay, with Rocks Geek and the Chicago Full Moon Jams. Mitchie has an essay in Invisible, a collection of essays on representation in science fiction and fantasy put together by Jim C. Hines, and which benefits the Carl Brandon Society, whose mission is to increase racial and ethnic diversity in 
in the production of an audience for speculative fiction. Yes. Now, I think that's the first time somebody said that. <laughs> so hello everybody. Thank you all for taking time to come here today. Um, a quick note before we get started, if you have anything noisy, I know the Wi-Fi in here is kind of janky, but on the off chance your device goes off, you're going to be that guy. Don't be that guy. Put it on silent. Put it on vibrate. Do me a favor. We'll really appreciate it. So, as the title states, we are talking about how glass ceilings, missing stairs, and gatekeepers present barriers to women in geek culture. We'll be talking about ways we, as a community, can, can fix this, can work around these problems. So, I'm going to start off with, um, hmm, who do I start off with? <laughs> who am I going to pick on first? Yes. I'm going to pick on Paul. <laughs> So, several surveys have shown that women are the fastest growing demographic among gamers and comic book readers. But there's still a perception that women don't like geek stuff. Why? And how is this stereotype perpetuated? Okay. I thought you were going to open those up to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm going to pull out my favorite example for this because this actually happened two years ago when we did our first panel at c 2 so Friday night, and I was walking around on the convention floor, and you know, if you're a speaker, they give you this nice little badge that says speaker on it. You know, like you get your passes that say three day. So I'm walking around on the floor, and I'm talking to vendors, and one of them looks at me, and he's like, oh, is that your badge, or did you just borrow it? If I was a guy, you would never ask this question. So. Yeah, there's, I think part of the problem is that there's still, obviously, a very erroneous uh, assumption that Geek and female, geek and women are not necessarily things that go together. Like, they're women who show up in geek culture are rare and beautiful special unicorns. <laughs> I don't think we're all that rare. Look at look at the crowd here. Then, like, we have been a part of geek culture forever. There was a fantastic speech by N.K. Jemsen, who is a one of the best world builders in fantasy fiction right now. She'd given a speech saying that it's really t past time for us to acknowledge how women, people of color, queer people, people with disabilities, all of everybody who is not the straight, able-bodied, cisgender, white man has always been a part of fandom. We've always been here. We've always been contributing to the things that we love, and it's far past time for us to acknowledge that fact. But I think part of the reason we have panels like this is so that we can be visible. We have the internet that makes us more visible. We are coming to conventions where there are more people who are from diverse backgrounds there for us to see. I don't know that it's entirely, I mean, invisibility is definitely a big part of the issue. But there's also this idea that women don't play the right kind of games, they don't read the right kind of sci-fi. They like the romance things and, you know, you're getting your girl cooties on my sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's another barrier that women have to fight their way past. First off, if they love like things that aren't, you know, considered the girl, excuse me, the girly parts, then they've got to come back past that barrier. But if they do like things that are girly, still saying that doesn't mean I'm not a geek. Still fighting to have the fact that they like anime and they like Sailor Moon and things like that be geeky too, because they are. <laughs> yeah. it's like Gail Simone actually had a really cool observation from last night's panel where she was sharing a story about how she was at a convention. She was signing at her table, you know, there's a line, of course, because it's Gail Simone stretching all the way down, and there's a comic book editor there with her who was going, I just don't understand why you know, we don't have more women reading comics. And she was like, have you seen? <laughs> of all these people coming to like just to see who are here at the convention, just to get my stuff signed, not to mention who's walking around. Like they're in your face. You they're just in your face. aren't looking. Yeah. Like they're right there. No, Open your there, eyes. So is is there a perception in geek culture that being geeky is unfeminine? 
Yes. Yes. There's, I mean, I don't know that it's the necessary, room and, no, but <laughs> I don't know that it's necessarily that being geeky is unfeminine. It's more the perception that the more feminine you are, the less valid your geekiness. Mm -hmm. So there tends to be a very big perception that if you show up in a cosplay that's very feminine, well, you're probably not a real fan. Or, you know, if, if you dress girly in your day-to-day -day life, well, clearly you can't be a geek because, oh God, you're dressed like a girl. Um, and I think it kind of stems from this idea that fandom is a guy thing. And that women, in order to fit in, historically have diminished their femininity in order to pass, basically, uh, in order to minimize the amount of, are there children here? Good. Okay, so in order to minimize the amount of shit that they're given <laughs> for participating in these communities. Um, and I think we're noticing and we're, as these dialogues happen, more and more women are feeling confident enough in their own femininity and their own geekiness to really be able to embrace both sides of that and not make them mutually exclusive. Yeah. I, think, I think there's also this uh, idea, and it might be reduced a little bit now, which is great, but there has historically been this idea that any woman who shows up at a convention, who shows up in geek culture, is an accessory to a man. <laughs> she is not there independently, she's not there because she wants to be there, she's there because her boyfriend dragged her along. Or she's there because she wants male attention. Right. And I know I tell this story at every panel too, but I first moved to Chicago and I was looking for a comic book store and I walked in and I won't name the store. And oh, the man <laughs> just <laughs> visually wants to about after the panel. No defamation here. Uh, the man walked up to me and said, Oh hi, you looking for a present for your boyfriend? So there's that assumption that just because you're female or you present as female, you have female anatomy, you look like a girl that you can't possibly actually really want to read some Batman. <laughs> it's Batman. Um, you know, we, we, touched on the, we touched on this already, but, uh, but I wanted to just to go to this one question back. Now, um, are, are women just not strongly as strongly represented as uh, producers or creators of comics, games, science fiction, and fantasy? Is it because there still aren't as many women trying to break into these industries, or is it something else? I think there, so it's a lot of it's very chicken in the egg. Like, there are women clearly who want to be a part of geek culture as creators, as fans, but as, especially if we're talking about being, becoming a creator. It's not always so easy as Oh, I don't see some. I don't see comics with enough female superheroes, or I don't see enough science fiction with women who are in, who are taking lead roles. I'm going to go and write those things. We can make those individual choices to try to create that art, but unless the upper echelons of you know the publishing industry of the movie industry are willing to actually say yes, we'll buy your we'll buy your thing, and not only will we buy your thing. We will promote it. We will support it, and we will support it, in a, and we will promote it in a way that says this is for everybody, not just oh, here's chiclet science fiction. There's 